Here's something you may not think about much, but it could affect our lives. Space is filling up with junk, old bits of rocket, fragments of spacecraft, even old satellites. They're all still up there and there's more space rubbish all the time, which poses a threat to vital satellites that could be hit and damaged. Now, a British team is hoping to solve the problem with a spacecraft that could grab some of the junk and bring it back to Earth. Here's our science correspondent, Rebecca Morell. Three, two, one, lift off. Blasting off. For decades, we've been launching into space. But what goes up rarely comes down, and space has become crowded with junk. The removed debris spacecraft could be the answer. The world's first attempt to test how we can clean up celestial clutter. It will see if it's possible to snare a satellite in a net and review how effective a harpoon is. It will then bring everything back down, burning up as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. It's been assembled in Surrey and has cost 15 million pounds. This is the last chance to see it before it's packed up for its launch early next year. This is the removed debris platform. Um, it's going to be one of the world's first missions to actually demonstrate cleaning up space junk. This mission is incredibly important. We have technologies on here that have never been demonstrated in space before and it's urgent that we actually launch this mission now so that we can develop these technologies uh, for use in the future. Since the early days of exploration, the area around the Earth has grown more and more cluttered. It's estimated there are about seven and a half thousand tonnes of junk, made up of old bits of rocket, fragments from defunct spacecraft, even tools dropped by an astronaut. Scientists believe there are now half a million pieces of debris the size of a marble or bigger, and each piece has the potential to do some serious damage. Last year, the International Space Station was hit. This chip in a window was caused when it was struck by a tiny fleck of paint. But the bigger pieces of junk are a more pressing problem. This European satellite, the size of a double-decker bus, suddenly stopped working in 2012. Since then, it's been circling the Earth, threatening other key satellites in its path. The problem is going to grow. It's going to grow because collisions are going to take place in the orbital environment. We're going to lose the satellites that we rely on. Um, that's going to be costly to us, it's going to be costly to the future generation. All eyes are now trained on the removed debris spacecraft. If the technology works, the hope is future missions can be scaled up and the space cleanup can begin. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News. Well, we've established a line with leading space scientist Andrew Coates, who's a professor of physics at University College London's Mallard Space Science Laboratory. He joins me from Dorking in southern England. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a big challenge here, Andrew. Uh, and I suppose one of the answers would be not to put so much up there in the first place. But let's first deal with how you might bring the junk down again. Yes, well, bringing the junk down again, some of it fortunately um, actually brings itself down because um, there is some amount of uh, neutral density of the upper atmosphere of the Earth which allows some of the material to actually just burn up automatically. But the problem parts of, the, of, of space junk are the bits which, which can't do that. They're in the wrong orbit to do that, perhaps, um, and um, uh, those orbits can last for a very long time. So there, there's really two real uh, main reasons where the space, uh, or areas of space, where the space junk is a big, uh, big problem. So the low Earth orbit is one of them, sort of a few hundred kilometers above our heads. That's where a lot of, you know, most of the pieces of space junk are, and where this mission is, is planned to to try and actually um, sort of reduce the amount uh, by, by intervening. The other one is the geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit. That's the one which um, communication satellites use, um, for example, the one which uh, transmits BBC World, for example, um, that um, is, is, uh, is a ge geostationary orbit. And there's another problem with space junk in that environment as well. So with that, people agree to boost their parts of, um, of, of, the, uh, of missions away from that orbit. So with this, um, with this low Earth orbit, um, there's something like half a million maybe pieces of space junk which, which uh, are a problem. And so getting rid of them is, is getting more and more important. And so this mission is a, an interesting um, uh, attempt of trial of a way of trying to do that um, uh, by intervening. Well, we certainly don't want to see the BBC World satellites knocked out of their position in orbit. But if we look at the lower Earth uh, orbit that you were talking about, what's 
What's most exciting to you as, as a potential means of, of intervening, as you put it? Uh, well, um, actually having this satellite which basically can throw a net around um, around particular um, bits of large space junk which are there. I mean, naturally, you know, although we don't deliberately put space junk there, some of it just appears. Um, so that there's some which come from satellite launches, for example, in the past, and then you get um, bits of rocket stages which are which are left around, and then there are smaller bits. There's even been examples of people dropping things from the International Space Station. So there are various sort of bits of, of various different sizes. The larger ones are trapped. Um, and so you know where they are. So, for example, um, there can be measures put in place on the International Space Station and elsewhere to actually avoid the space junk. Um, but uh, there are other bits which are smaller, and you can't actually predict um, when those are going to hit. Now, space is big, but it's not. Uh, it's not. You know, I mean, it does become very crowded in that orbit, and so there have been these, these sort of uh, examples of satellites actually being lost and um, uh, impacts on the space station, and so on, which which have ha happened in the past. And so it is a it is a growing problem, and um, and being able to deal with it perhaps by actually catching some piece of the space debris and um, and bringing them back, or to um, uh, put them into an orbit where they um, where they could potentially burn up by going lower into the atmosphere. Um, those are the types of ameliorative. Uh, measures which you could take and so this um, this mission is going to try to um, to demonstrate that um, of course for a half a million um, pieces of space junk it's impossible to do all of those this will be able to do maybe one or two um, but uh, but nevertheless it's an interesting thing to actually try because um, you know the space environment is getting um, is getting very crowded and, uh, and ways of getting around that are, are important to look at Andrew, course, are... Andrew I'm afraid we have to leave it there though this is fascinating and vital but thank you so much for your expertise and in fact, it's time now on...